What's up everyone, Lion Roar here, and it is time to cover the Dawnbreakers, a brand new clan in Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. But first, download Bloodline Heroes of Lithus, a mobile RPG action fighting game where you can marry your champions to create new and unique hybrids. Use the link in the description to start with some free stuff, including golden diamonds. See you hopefully soon. Alright, so as usual, I'm going to start out by talking about the clan trait before I break down both the male and the female individually, talk about which one might be better than the other, and then discuss what traits might be good on these. Um, so first things first here, let's take a look at this trait, Last Wish, which says the caster grants allied champions some percent critical evade rate for six seconds when the caster is defeated. This effect cannot be stacked. Now notice I said some percent. That's because this is an epic hero and so some percent is 10.33%, which of course is going to be higher the higher the rarity. Um, now, how do I feel about this particular trait? Well, they're using some language here that we're not super familiar with, so it's going to take actually seeing it and playtesting to see if it's any good. Um, critical evade rate. Uh is interesting um and i think provides a potential protective factor here's the problem uh it depends on the caster being defeated and if you've watched my videos before no matter what game it is that i've played <laughs> almost always in any game if there's a trait or a skill on a hero or a champion that depends on them dying it's usually not great because you want to keep your team alive, right? Like you don't want to depend on losing your own champions and heroes, especially in PVP where you have five on five matchups where when you lose one of your heroes, you're losing 20% of your team. Now, there are times it can be good. It can lead to shenanigans. But that really depends on resurrection. And there's only a little bit of that in this game right now. But if resurrection becomes more of a thing, keep this clan in the back of your mind. Because you're going to want to put together teams uh, that will allow for repeated deaths and, and bringing back to life to trigger abilities like this over and over. Now, I personally think that there could be a lot better abilities than this. Um, for that kind of resurrection effect, but we're not even close to that in this game right now. So let's look at their individual skills. Now, of course, when we're looking at the male, the one thing that you're going to notice about both him and the female, of course, is that their clan is uh, mages. <laughs> and there's already so many good mages in this game. Um, we just got male water and sun. We had female ho and we have male ho. And you know, that's not to mention even still having like male Fulger floating around out there, female Ignis, who um, have long been bypassed and yet are still top damage dealers on their teams whenever they're played. Uh, so there's lots of powerful options um, competing for resources here. So it's going to take a lot to unseat, especially the most recent mages in this game. Can they unseat them? Well, let's take a look at the male. I'm going to look at the passive first because that's usually the first thing that affects the battlefield. And his really, really first affects the battlefield. Uh, Prophecy reappearance. When the caster enters the battlefield, he immediately casts the ultimate skill. The caster loses 50 energy per second in the next 8 seconds. During the battle, the caster's attacks cannot be dodged and inflict divine damage, which ignores invincibility, damage immunity, and death immunity effects on the target. That's really interesting, okay? Keep that in mind. Um, that's kind of cool. So... <laughs> We're going to read the ultimate next because that is like the passive makes it happen immediately. Um, Celestial Enlightenment, the caster inflicts damage to the enemy target equal to 860% of his strength. I think that's supposed to say his. Um, casting a prophecy. If the affected target casts an ultimate skill in the next eight seconds, all allied champions recover 250 energy and gain 25% damage reduction effect for five seconds. Um... All right, so first of all, the number pops out to me. 860% damage strength is huge. 
and we've been seeing some numbers like this on recent high damage dealing champions. So that has the potential to be a lot of damage. Um, and anytime you get that uh, energy recovery and your team is going off faster, all allied champions recover 250 energy. Um, yeah, I mean, more ultimates, please. <laughs> Um, so I think the fact that he comes in, he does this right away and then has the chance to, to speed up, uh, the rest of your team's ultimates is potentially really powerful. Um, another skill, uh, vision of truth, the caster attacks the enemy with the highest strength, dealing 480% of damage to their team, um, of their strength and inflicts vision of truth for eight seconds. Targets affected will have their total strength capped at 75% of their starting strength. This effect can't be removed. Interesting, because if you think about who has the highest strength in the game, it's usually, I mean, first of all, your big nukers. So, male water and sun, duh. <laughs> it used to be female Devala. And the reason is because people really, like, they put Brutal on and potentially tons of vigor, uh, stuff like that. So, you're really nullifying the big damage dealer on the team. Um, now, I will say... This seems like a response to male water and sun to knock that damage down a bit. Um, but 75% of what male water and sun does is still a freaking ton. So I'm not sure how much this actually nullifies him. Um, I think that's the part that catches my eye is that we're looking at a champion here who, um, really is going to do a lot of damage, and try to nullify some of the big meta heroes. And if not male water and sun, probably a Phoenix. And it, it, some teams still are running female Devala and don't have male water and sun and stuff like that. Mm, I'm not, I'm not sure though. I mean, I, I don't know that he's going to nullify male water and sun teams. Quite honestly, what I'm looking at here, I think that his biggest impact is going to be the damage. Um, and that might sound boring, <laughs> But, I mean, he comes in and does it right away and then gives other effects to the team. So while a lot of people will probably be looking at the meta countering abilities here, I just think he's another straight damage dealer, potentially. Um, you know, he's he's sort of like a sniper type, too, where he just, like, comes in... When it says to the enemy target, by the way, I think the language is a little bit confusing. Um, but that's usually the champion that's standing right in front of him. So just a heads up on that. So, yeah, kind of a sniper type, but you don't really get to choose the target. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to table how I feel about him. As you can tell, I'm a little bit mixed. Let's take a look at the female. Um, and then I'll really assess together. Uh, with you, uh, who I think is going to be better. Let's take a look at that passive, Divine Prophecy. During the battle, it increases the caster's crit evade rate by 30%. When the battle starts, the caster simultaneously casts the following prophecies. Prophecy 1. An enemy mage champion is deployed. 2. <laughs> two allied champions are killed successively in 4 seconds. When the first prophecy is fulfilled, the caster gains 30% damage reduction for 10 seconds. When the second prophecy is fulfilled, immediately removes all allied champions debuffs and grants each of them a shield equal to 10% of their max constitution for 8 seconds. The prophecy can only be fulfilled once in battle. Mm, that's kind of out there, and I'm not sure how to feel about that until I test with it. Um... <laughs> but... It sounds like the ultimate effect of it could be powerful. I just don't know if it takes too long. We'll see. Um, okay, uh, let's look at the other skill because that the Chain of Judgment should go off next. Links up with the enemy champion with the highest energy for a total of 5 seconds. Um, the linked enemy champion takes 120% damage of the caster's strength per second and has their constitution regeneration reduced by 40%. Each time the enemy target gains energy... The caster steals 50% of it. So this is another meta hate hero, by the way. Um, it's not necessarily always going to target male water and sun, but when you think about who often has the highest energy, it's usually male water and sun. Um, 
So that could potentially be a neutralizer, even more so than the male, I think. Um, Radiant Revelation. Immediately removes all debuffs, excluding those that cannot be removed from all allied champions. Um, I'm sorry, from the allied champion with the least constitution and casts a prophecy. That allied champion must stay alive for five seconds. During the prophecy period, all damage taken by that allied champion will uh, be calculated after the prophecy expires. The allied champion also receives true healing during the period, recovering a total of 25% of their max constitution. I mean, so what do we have here? It's a lot of words. It's what we typically get with new uh, heroes and champions in Bloodline. And it's a lot of words. But basically what we have here um, is a hero who's doing something kind of niche with prophecies and healing. Um, potentially neutralizing a meta hero. I don't know as a pure play if she is good enough to just go gung-ho leveling and putting in a team. But if you really want to, like, frustrate people, <laughs> I think you can make a CC team, including her, um, and male water and sun teams are going to be like, WTF just happened. Like, why is my male water and sun not going off? I don't know, potentially. Now, male water and sun really just has to go off, wants to get rolling, even if he's slowed down. But I'd be really interesting to, I'd be really interested to see a CC team that is built to take out male water and suns. And I think it could be possible with this, but I think you have to get really creative. And I'm talking like real CC. I'm talking like, Female Galabar, male Galabar, probably like female choir, her, and then maybe you have your like one damage dealer in like Phoenix or something like that. Um, and you just frustrate the daylights out of the other team, stun lock them, keep that their male water and sun from going off. Your team stays alive, doesn't die. I mean, what's even better is if you just put the male water and sun in your lineup too. So some combo of those heroes i mean you don't necessarily even need the male you can go with male galabar or uh female choir you probably don't need both because they're serving the same purpose to where they just soak up a ton of damage so if you have like the female galabar the female choir uh male water and sun phoenix um and if you have the male water and sun you don't necessarily need the phoenix but you'll still take care of all the Devella teams that there's still a lot out there female Devella, and her uh well, you've just created a really frustrating team. I'm not going to go as far as to say she's main comparable because I really don't think she is. But I think she's a way to mess with people. <laughs> and she certainly could be like a team two or team three type of champion if you've really got that mix to, make, to create that like pure CC type of team. Um, so who do I think is better out of the male or the female? Honestly, overall, I think the male's better. I still don't think he's probably quite main comparable, but I think for people who decide they want to throw 70 vigor on him and level him the whole way up, they're probably going to find he's one of the biggest damage dealers on their team. So in that sense, he could be main comparable. And in fact, because of how his damage is targeting, I bet he's really, really good against bosses. Um, maybe not, uh, as good as the cigaric we just got, uh, but I bet he's pretty good. Um, I think they tried to make a champion that was going to be more of like a team protection type of guy. And I think he's just a pure damage dealer. And I think that makes him more flexible. Um, but probably a team two or team three. And if you weren't sure what you wanted to do, or you have a pretty standard type of roster, he's probably who you would want to level up. But man, if you had some of those CC heroes I talked about, you might want to try the female. Just saying. So what traits do I think would go well on these? Well, uh, for the female, um, I think that uh, Devout would be really good. Um, that's the Aeson trait. And so that improves the healing efficiency of the team. And um, that's what she's good at. So that's a great one. And then uh, otherwise things that keep her alive. So honorable energetic maybe even loyal i mean it's actually pretty vanilla um and in fact i could see there being a case for just go with honorable and energetic maybe leave a spot open for one of those like full team um 
uh, traits like the stone thrower trait, for example, which gives everybody increased attack speed. You can put that on her because I think that, you know, she's got the space for that on there. And that can leave your other champions like Mel Waterns on Phoenix and whoever else, you know, your more powerful big damage dealers um, to put some just really devastating traits on them. Uh, for the male, I think he requires different traits. Um, you know, I, of course, Brutal, obviously, you want Brutal on him. Um, I think you want to get his strength up really high. So if you're putting a lot of vigor on too, you probably want to consider that Gultung trait. Um, because that's really going to protect him. Um, and that's, of course, very, very important on your big strength heroes. Uh, so I think that would, would be good. I, I find myself putting honorable on like all my heroes, basically. But especially if they're a big damage dealer that might otherwise be fragile or something like that. I'm not saying he's necessarily fragile, um, but it, it certainly helps to keep your team alive. Um, so like, yeah, brutal, honorable, the gold chung trait. Then you got one to play with there. And I just tend to default to, like, potentially Agile, unless you've got the Stone Thrower trait. Um, Agile would be a good one here, as well as Focused, so um, you can get that ult to go off more. Certainly, for him, you want the ult to go off as fast as possible. Um, remember, you can have too much attack speed. Uh, there is a soft cap on that. However, I am a believer, a soft cap... <laughs> even once you hit it, um, even if you're just a millisecond faster than your opponents, you know this, if you have male water and sun, um, even a millisecond faster means that you could probably win the match. If, if your male water and sun goes off a split second faster than the opposing team, that might be all she wrote. Um, but there is a point where you can put too much attack speed on a team. So if you already have the stone thrower trait, you don't necessarily need agile, but I would put something on him to get that ultimate to go off faster. Balance it out however you may. If you already have a lot of attack speed on your team, maybe you have the mask um, and you also have the stone thrower trait, then you don't need agile uh, and focus would be better or vice versa. But those are my thoughts. Um, this was a pretty long video. Uh, these are weird heroes, um, but I think that they're worth playing around with. Let me know in the comments what you think about them. Uh, if you enjoy videos like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification, and I will catch you in the next one.